Hey, everybody. So there's um, sometimes questions in Alex about the topic that we call um, setting up a one step unit conversion. So these problems can be entered in a variety of ways and still be correct. And I just wanna go over some of the options with you. Um, so I have some sample problems. And as with everything in Alex, they start out on the easy sort of easier side of things. The next one's a little more challenging. And then the final one is always the most difficult. Um, so I'm gonna start out the same way. And really we don't, have to understand what the unit is about yet. We just need to be able to use the metric prefixes and dimensional analysis, okay? So for example, here we have this problem where I notice that the unit that's changing is from joules to kilojoules. Alex teaches this um, using scientific notation, which I think is kind of confusing for people. Well, technically it's exponential notation, but anyway, I think that format is confusing to people. So the way that I teach it is to establish some basic definitions that don't rely on using exponential notation. So for the metric system relationship between the word kilo and the base unit, um, one kilo of whatever type of unit is always equal to a thousand of the base. So like, for example, if we were doing um, a distance as the base, I could write one kilometer is the same thing as a thousand meters. In Alex, they'll do it like this. They'll do 10 to the three meters equals one kilometer. That's exponential notation. I think that's confusing to people. So I teach it this way. And as it turns out, Alex will accept your answers if you use this conversion factor. Um, other definitions for the metric system that might come up at this point would be something like um, centimeters. You can define that as 100 centimeters equals one meter. Oh, I forgot about decimeters, right? And again, the base can change. I'm only using meters as an example, but any, any unit can go there. So deci means 10 of them for every one of the base. Um, milli is a thousand for one of the base. Let's see. Um, a million is micro, which we use a mu symbol for. So like a million micrometers is the same as one meter. And a billion, that's nine zeros, um, is nanometers, All right? So these are the basic metric prefixes that I think you should know. Um, it's worth making flashcards and getting used to them. And so, Certainly there are others, but these are the main, the most important ones. As it turns out in Alex, even though the explanation will give you that funny um, exponential notation, and for, you know, like for these ones, they're all smaller than the base unit. So for those ones, it would tell you to do something like 10 to the negative one meters is equivalent to one decimeter. Like numerically, these are the same thing. We could even say they're equal, right? It's just a matter of whether you are thinking of this in terms of meter being one or in terms of the decimeter being one. So 10 to the negative one is the same thing as 0.1. And so if we have 10 to the negative one meters, we have 0.1 meters. That's also the same thing as one tenth of a meter. Well, one tenth of a meter is a decimeter. So that's the logic that they're applying here, okay? So there's a lot of ways to think of this. In my experience, students do the best when they remember the definitions that I give in terms of, in terms of the base unit like this. Um, sometimes people can be fairly comfortable converting this, these big numbers into 
exponential notation. So that would be 10 to the six micrometers and 10 to the nine nanometers. Um, but I just remember that there's lots of the small unit in the larger unit. And everything except kilometers is smaller than the base. Okay, so to get this answer right, what you have to plug in is some factor, conversion factor, that will change joules into kilojoules. So what I do is I always write what I'm trying to get rid of on the bottom, and I write what I'm trying to get to on the top. And then I ask myself, okay, what's the relationship between these two units? And the answer there is just like one kilometer is equal to a thousand uh, meters, we can say one kilo J, these are joules, but we'll learn that in chapter five, but kilojoules, one kilojoule is equal to a thousand joules. You could also, you could also, if you wanted to, write one kilojoule is 10 to the three joules. Those are equivalent. You could also do what Alex does and write it as 10 to the negative three kilojoules per one joule. That's the same thing numerically. You have 10 to the three in the denominator. So if I wanted that to be in the numerator, I just make it 10 to the negative three, okay? These are exponent, oh, exponent rules, essentially. All three of these options, when typed into Alex, will give you the credit for the question. So you get to pick, okay? So now going on to the next kind of question, um, they'll put the unit you're trying to change into the denominator. So in that situation, uh, we're going from grams per milliliters into times something into grams per liter. So I noticed that milliliters and liters are, are the conversion we're using here. So dimensional analysis still works, but instead of putting the, the unit I'm trying to get rid of on the bottom, because it won't cancel, they have to be across from each other to cancel. I'm going to put it on the top. So I'm going to put milliliters on the top. And I'm going to put the thing I'm trying to get to on the bottom because that's where it is in the answer. And so the relationship milli is one of the base to a thousand milliliters in this case. Okay. So that's what I could put into there. But again, Alex will accept other answers. You could put in 10 to the three milliliters per liter. You could also put in, I, I don't think anybody would do this maybe, but you could, uh, maybe you would do it. I don't know. Um, you could put it in that way. All right. I think the easiest thing to remember are the whole numbers. So a thousand mils for one liter. Okay. Now on to the third type of question you get. This one is sometimes squared, sometimes cubed, but it's always, um, we have to use the, the rules for exponents. All right. And so, I notice we're going from centimeters cubed to meters cubed. So the mistake people often make is to just put in um, centimeters on the bottom and meters on the top, and they would go like this, and they would think they're done. You're not, because a centimeter and a centimeter cubed are not the same thing. So in order to convert, what you need to do is cube the entire relationship. So this. 100 centimeters for a meter is always a truth. And, and all I have to do to make it into a volume unit is cube the whole thing, okay? So one cubed is just one. My unit gets cubed too, so now that's a meter cubed. Um, 100 cubed is not just 100, right? 100 cubed is 100 times 100 times 100. And so that's gonna give us um, a million, I think. Yep. So you could write it out if you want to like this, or you could use scientific notation, but now that's centimeters cubed. All right. So now it's a volume conversion. Um, so I could use it this way. I could also write one meter cubed per 10 to the six centimeters cubed, or I could flip it and write 10 to the negative six meters cubed per one centimeter cubed. They are all correct. All of the ones on the bottom are going to give you the right answer. You can't, um, well, I shouldn't say that, I guess. I'm going to circle in pink the ones that well. <laughs> I 
These ones will give you the credit for the question. This one does not because you have to distribute the, the cube in order to get the factor correct. Okay, so Alex wouldn't accept it um, if you don't cube everything inside the parentheses, the units and the numbers. And so that's the mistake a lot of people are making. Uh, so if you're stuck on that topic, uh, hopefully this video helped you. Um, but if not, you can always come to office hours and we can work through it together.